unbroken <laughs> trend. And I like it. Now it looks loud. <laughs> I was gonna say. Oh yeah. Oh, no. I was gonna say you. I like the setup. Hi Barry. Hi Barry. Hello there. Oh. See you. Figured I gotta start focusing on the budget. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, looks to be a brief agenda tonight, and um, the first three are kind of related, right? <clears throat> um, the big topic I think for the evening is, is to sketch out what we'd like to, how we'd like to. Structure the financial forum, and uh, the ten-year capital plan review will fold into that, I'm sure, and so will the um, likely the fire department grant. And then uh, we thought we finalized the FY20 budget calendar minutes from last meeting. So, any other business that anybody like to add? All right, turn it over to Bob. Okay. At least look at, um, take a look at what we did last year on the finance. Yeah, the next, uh, starting in page one, you know, the next three pages are just the presentation was the last year. So, our, you know, some things sometimes change, but our habit is to first have Sharon wrap up the prior year, which would be for this year would be FY18. She'll talk about, you know, revenues being over, what was budgeted, I don't know how much. I know there were. Talk about FY18 expenditures being under budget, and that's by law they have to be. And then look at free cash. And I know as of last week she didn't have free cash. I don't know that she'll have it by the 10th. Uh, honestly, uh, I know it's going to be okay. On that, I don't really know. Um, and she'll also present reserves. And it's obviously a, a different financial climate this year in terms of the override pass. Um, and then we'll project um, FY19, the current year. Uh, I'm actually not aware at this moment of any differences in revenues other than state aid is lower and new growth is higher than we budgeted. And the net of those is a plus positive, I don't know, 250,000. Um, yeah, I'll have to catch up to Sharon to see if there's any other revenues that are different. Um, our accommodated costs, we haven't really spent a lot of time. kind of what's going on in special education. I don't know what's going on with the state's budget, uh, which is uh, some money for circuit breaker. That's unclear. Um, and then last gonna, year. Right. Sorry, based on that, we're going to have a discussion of some of the assumptions. Yeah, we'll, like we'll have to. Benefits. You know, how much free cash do you want to use? If you use this much, the operating budget looks about like this. And I can tell you right now, if you use about a million dollars, or whatever it was last year, maybe it was a million too. Uh, the operating budgets will be more than plus 3%. Um, and it can only go up from there based on how I'm conservative when we started. Uh, so it should be you know, much better than zero, maybe one and a half, or whatever's been recent. And that, what do we think our health care assumptions That's That's the key. Because um, that's a big swinger. You know, I don't know. I'm kind of going month by month trying to see the run rate because we've made so many changes and have some more upcoming. I'll tell you, I know enough right now to propose uh, to lower this year's budget in November town meeting by a couple hundred thousand. And I believe there'll be a couple hundred thousand at least uh, extra from that. So if we're going to assume seven and a half percent next year, maybe we really assume four. I don't know. You know I don't know what the right number is because the real baseline of seven and a half percent is lower. So why would you actually decrease this year's? What's the advantage? Um, right, because I don't know if we'll have free cash available in the November town meeting, and I think we'll need to use some money, so that would be a source. So for instance, I know we have like 80,000 of capital and other little things. We have to repay some debt for TLT. So for all the things we would like to do and need to do, we need a source of funds. Yeah. New growth will be some of that, and health insurance surplus, if you will, will be another source. Those will be the two main sources. So in order to balance, that's why okay. it. Yeah, and we always recognize new growth because otherwise you can't use it, even though it's there. And I, I, 
I forget Victor told me the number. We assumed 550 was eight something, eight thirty, mm -hmm. whatever. So it was good. Um, and, and it's really before most of the developments that you think of that are large have hit you. Um, a lot of it's um, single family home knocked down, some new homes built, some impact of portions of small projects. That's a good start. Probably for town meeting and definitely for the forum is to kind of take a look at the budget position, the amount that was raised to the override, current uses of it versus kind of following fiscal year, but also TLT because I know you just brought it up because it's a small item, but we face the need to to pay some of that still, right? <laughs> um, I guess that's a nice way to, to At November town meeting, I'm, I'm going to say the number is something like 170000 that we have to pay out of free cash or whatever we have. And that's because we didn't borrow too much in case the MSBA repaid some, and they didn't repay very much. Right. So we have to, we have to you know, pay that. We borrowed a short-term ban, and now we have to pay for it. Um, you know, the 4.15 million had a couple pieces, or had a lot of pieces. Um, one of it is debt, and that's something we'll kind of get into if you want. Um, I gave a summary a couple of meetings ago to the select board about positions filled and not filled based on the ones we asked for. Uh, we do have all of our police officers hired, and we have none of our firefighters hired, but that's good because the grant otherwise wouldn't have paid for them. So. So maybe that was just a happy coincidence. Maybe that was a plan. Wow, yeah. I'm shocked the police got that. that yeah, it's quite civil great. service, so it's much faster. The fire is, and it's just slower. There's no secret about that. Um, I don't know how much discussion this year compared to last would be on debt and capital, but as you all know, there's a large capital projects still lingering out there. And certainly one of the comments through the override and before as it pertained to the library was, why didn't I know? Right. So I think we all need to make sure that everybody knows. Yeah. And there's a memo in here. Well, shoot, we all scream from our rooftops, I, then, I guess. <laughs> I, get, I get quite frustrated when I hear that. I know. Well, there's a memo that starts on page four that I shared with the board last night. Um, and I said, John Hall's here at work on Capitol. John started by asking me for the summary that he had us to work on some things for last night. So I, I divided up five capital projects or areas. They're not just routine equipment and building maintenance and so forth. Um, and I, you know, if, if you want to jump into that topic, I will. There's no more questions kind of on the financial part. If there's any suggestions for areas we should cover, like Marsh's death, um, or things to spend a little less time on, yeah, I wonder if we know now or anytime. Before we jump into the capital, yeah. I'm wondering if we could just kind of finalize the framework that we think the finance form should take. Um, so it feels to me like we you know, follow last year's framework pretty closely, right? Just to kind of look it's generally been done. Status on FY18, uh, a look ahead to FY19 uh, projections as we see it now. Um, I like Mark's suggestions. Agree on at least kind of a how would you phrase it there, the override and kind of a, the status of releasing those funds. Yeah, and I think it needs both kind of a what has happened, but also what's going to happen. Yeah. So a great example being, well, not a great example because the fire thing has another source of funding now, but things that are, that are anticipated but haven't yet taken place. So probably the update that you gave the uh, select board okay. would be helpful. Um, and then the other part was just. Um, Thinking about all the other things on the horizon, that TLT makes it onto your memo, I doubt it. It's no, that's what that's passed. Yeah, but just maybe understanding its impact. We're going to see it in the, in the debt numbers, right? Yeah. Probably just worth kind of seeing what that is. Yeah, and sure, I'm not meaning to dredge it up, but as a summary, but also in the circumstance that if we decided there was extra money for one time purposes, we should talk about what those could be, what might make sense versus what not. And I don't know if TLT would merit being on that list or not, but like Bob, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, one thing you can consider with this sort of extra money is um, 
debt capital or 5%, but because the TLT is this much, let's just do 5% plus TLT. Right. I think, yeah, I thought that's right. what you were thinking. Yep. Yeah, I can't remember what the debt service is. It's got to be a couple hundred thousand at least. Though. We borrowed from just under two million. Yeah, so um, the uh, sort of casual observer of town finances might say, wow, we just passed an override. Why do you need to spend a free capital? Uh, and so I think it might be good to do a couple minute explanation about what the override does and didn't do. Because people think it was going into free cash, they might think, well, because we're, we're funding a shortfall. So it might make sense to kind of have that as a as part of the as part as when, the when status maybe, of the override. Yeah, or maybe when when, when the whole conversation of free cash comes up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and we often have a good slide on that that just shows how much was used yeah. and then how much was um, regenerated. Regenerated. Thank you. Rejuvenated. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> but that clearly shows, because I always look at it, especially with those smaller amounts, it's sort of this buffer in there that's never really used in reality. It's well, kind of your working line of capital. Work capital. Yeah. It brings you back to your discussion that you tabled for a little while in the future. Do you want to move that around to some kind of work or some stabilization? Do we anticipate questions around that? I might as well have a slide that, because it's always a good slide too, that just shows how much was used and how much was regenerated. <laughs> I don't want to yeah. rejuvenate is my mind. And it shows how you basically um, do not end up using what you think you're going to need to. So it's sort of a line of credit. Yeah, I mean, there's some number that clearly, well, one never knows, but historically is clearly sustainable. But the other part of that relates to the assumptions that we make in, for example, health premiums, um, excise taxes, and we've tended to, well, we tend to be conservative except on health. I mean, we've kind of gone against what the broker keeps telling us. That they keep and this guy keeps still falling. End up being over. Right, yeah. right. But but that those assumptions that we make lead to some of the regeneration and lead to the the fact that you know we're not pulling out a whole lot of free cash net, if any. Um, and the issue is, how do you make that understandable? Sharon usually tries to explain um, both extra revenues and less spending as one time or not one time. Uh, excise taxes can be one time in the year it happens, but then it's a new baseline. Right? Uh, excise taxes, I think, in the last year or the year before, were like 400000 more than we budgeted. That was phenomenal. We forgot to imagine that the population was growing by like six percent that year. Some of that cars. Yeah, plus the car industry they're doing pretty well. So somebody's yeah. buying the cars. Renegades. <laughs> yeah, so Barry's points uh, a good one that to sort of establish that some amount of free cash is not an emergency, it's just operations, kind of normal operations. Do you want to talk about the idea of the stabilization fund or just leave that for me? In the finance form? Yeah. I wasn't thinking along those lines, but we could because there's not, because we were able to get the override last year, there's not as much pressure. So it might be interesting to just sort of throw it out there and see if mm -hmm. any reaction. Do you want to do that it should before be, it should we be have an opinion? Not. What's that? Before we have an opinion about that? Oh, before we have an opinion? Yeah, I'm just wondering what's the right sequence of events. Should we have an opinion and then kind of discuss it through? We could discuss it tonight, and if we think we're not comfortable with our opinion, then we could put it off. But we could even have a discussion tonight. I would love to know what some other towns are doing as it relates to that also. And kind of where, you know, where does that sit? You know, how was it thought about um, kind of before being able to have an intelligent opinion? Most, most of our fears have some sort of stabilization fund that's larger than ours. Sometimes, and often it's called capital stabilization fund. Larger in dollars or percent or both? Uh, dollars. I don't know, but percent probably the same. Yeah. I mean, 
Congress was telling you it's a million bucks. Right. And, and many other communities have more free cash. I was really surprised to learn that. Right. Communities you'd look at and say, not that financially healthy, but boy, look at their lot of cash reserves. Yeah.
we also fund, town meeting funded last spring a half a million dollars from the dispatch center rehab. Um, that piece there is we're going to, we ran into a lot of challenges at the dispatch center trying to figure out where to put it, what to do to the building, and how to, most, most importantly, how to continue operations while work is being done. <laughs> you can't just not have dispatch. Um, you know, they could be in the parking lot, they could be in another town, but we really wanted to think this through. And as, as the more we thought about it, there's two or three locations in the police station it could be. Um, its current location is the best location, which doesn't help them in terms of construction and operations. If it was, we just build it somewhere else and they could move in, that would be easy. So we, we talked quite a lot over the summer and thought that a better use of that half million for two reasons was to do some project design work on the whole four million. That's something that would have been part of that four million instead. Um, and the reason is we've hit the snag with dispatch for sure. Uh, but the other reason, which is an, an important part of this, is um, three out of the four million was placed in a bond bill by Senator Lewis. Um, John and I still don't exactly know the details. We think it's part of a $70 million building security, school building security. Uh, Bond bill. Um, our legislators will be in next Tuesday. That's certainly one of the questions. And you know, if if what I know is correct, uh, being shovel ready is the most important part of the project. And we are very close to that by having the study all done. We know what it costs. We know all the things we want to do. But this last piece would actually make the whole project shovel ready. So that's why I think I'm you know, putting the half million in that direction would make us eligible. Now the governor has to release the funds and we have no idea when that might happen. It could happen next spring, it could happen in 10 years. But I think we just need to position ourselves. Um, I know the surplus is good this year, but I'm sure there's lots of uses for it. And I, I've heard that the current year is, is also very good. Um, so in terms of building security, um, again, we it is now placed into this balanced capital plan um, as 10-year debt, borrowing the full $4 million, we'll assume we get no help. And that's affordable, starting in the FY20 budget. And that's because 5% uh, of the override was suddenly available next year. This year, we spent it on something else. Um, well, on the next topic, so I'll get to that. But starting in FY20, it's just sitting there available. It's an extra $400,000. Something thousand. <clears throat> um, I, I, I would then, if, if November town meeting approves that, I would then ask April town meeting for debt authorization to be ready to borrow the four million. We'll have to then determine what's the status of this three million dollar help from the state, possibly, and we'll really have to figure out what we want to do. But we certainly like to have the authorization because of all the capital projects I'll tell you about. This is clearly the highest. So we're prepared to spend the four million, and let's say the bond bill gets released in 24 months. We've already spent the money. Yeah, that's something. The fact that we spent the money, do they, do they, so now you don't need it, or, or will they pay us? I think, I think nothing offensive, man, but the state usually says too bad you don't need it anymore. So we have to be really careful before we did that. We just want to have all the tools ready, be as prepared as we can, and have our flexibility. Um, and then we'll just have to see. I don't. I don't think anyone knows what the status of that bond. And including our legislature so far. So there's a risk to waiting until we get it, which could be forever. And there's a risk yes. to doing the right thing. Right. And then give up the money that was it. Was yep. now right. you've encumbered it yourself instead. Yep. No question. Yeah, you're right. All right, because I'm even concerned if we authorize it, it looks like <coughs> doesn't mean we have to borrow it. But if suddenly something happens and let's say we can get two million dollars from the state and we need to borrow two million. But the state says you've got to start in 90 days for some reason. Then we can do it, you know, with that authorization and with the budget. Before you has any town ever get ready to accept this I mean, it just seems like I know, it's a time to catch this tricky because many, well, some money from the state, at least I should say, requires a local amount. Usually there's some kind of a time frame, so obviously cities can act faster, towns need a town meeting. So it's usually not a problem. But you just don't know. Sometimes, like the Main Street repaving, 
was an opportunity that came up with about two hours to decide. Now, we bought some time by saying we're going to have a meeting. So I'm going to put a lot of people there. We'll have Stoneham, we'll have North Reddick, we'll have Reddick, we'll have all the legislators and so on. Uh, but the window of, yes, we're interested in we'll go that far was very short because some other project fell off. So you just have to be flexible, I guess. It's up to the governor, basically. So ultimately, yeah. To, to release money, it's up to the legislature how to spend it. Could we be? Has already say, been decided. Yeah, yeah so much on school building or right. So it's, now it's up to the governor. Seventy-two million or something. Would shovel ready, but not with debt authorized, be a, an okay place to sit for a bit? In other words, the study's done and ready. Because we could always call a town meeting. You know that that's a useful purpose for a town meeting to to get three million could bucks. Be. But you know again. I mean, go through the whole picture, and then you get a better sense. I have a plan B, just in case. But um, I would prefer to have prepared, if no one objects, to take action without needing their permission again. Um, you know, a certain amount of trust, they have to trust that we're not going to do something that wouldn't make sense. Oh, in regards to the dispatch center, so they're just going to go business as you Leave it as it is for now. Um, and what are the concerns there? It's just not technologically prepared for this full implementation. So no, so, no concerns today. Okay. That's all. Just it that. just seemed like a logical first step. And it would have been if we built a new one. <laughs> <laughs> one is it space consideration or is it? Um, I, ideally, it, it should be a little larger than it is. And obviously, if you want it where it is and you want it a little larger, it's quite a challenge. So, you know, you could knock an outside wall down and you expand it. And that, that we've discussed that also. So, you know, none of the solutions are ideal. We've talked about putting it in two other locations in the building, but again, it's, it's complicated. And all the current technology goes there. So, to move it would be a lot of wiring in the, in the building. Um, the next one is, as I'm sure many of you have heard, the elementary school space study. First step that's going to happen. Remember, um, if you wind back to last April, the permanent building committee had 150,000 in their budget, if you will. When the override passed, I just stood in town meeting and explained that the additional 5% of the override um, was going to be directed to the permanent building committee for the purpose of elementary school space study or whatever the term was. It's very similar to that. So that meant the line became 357. We actually uh, met with the, well, there was a permanent building committee meeting, and then I met with the chair and the vice chair, along with John and some others I've listed here. Um, they were reluctant because they have a process and a flow chart, and they said, you're here, and we want you here. We don't want to see you until you're here. So that should be your money, not our money. So we're going to ask November Town Meeting to just rename the 207,500 as a different line, but for the same purpose. Somewhat of a technicality, you probably could get away with not doing it, but it seems like a better idea. To do it. Um, the school committee, uh, I think it was two weeks ago, uh, liked this idea, and they also had a twenty thousand dollars savings from two other capital lines that they wanted to combine. So they're going to ask for two hundred twenty-seven thousand five hundred, and twenty thousand was sort of linked to an enrollment study and done one. Quite a while. You can tell with the new growth going on, especially on the west side. That's not a bad idea. So that's going to be largely a school committee-led discussion. But I've been I've been part of the discussion so far. I'm very supportive of what I've heard. Um, what I told the school committee was all five of these areas have various states of preparation and, and shovel readiness. Yours is the worst because you don't know what you need. You need something to happen to kill them, but you don't know what else. Does kill them need to be bigger? Is it big enough? You don't know. Whereas all these items I'll tell you about have been scoped out. So you know, after some discussion, they agreed that they need to be better prepared to answer the question. And you know, the overall question will be when. You know, let's let's say everything was ready to be known right now. Then it's a community discussion, starting probably with you. So how do we pay for all this and when do we ask? 
some of its debt exclusion has to be. Um, after this, and you know, I'd say this is a, is a close second in terms of importance, <clears throat> but it's not realistic in the short run. I mean, this is a debt exclusion as it's currently laid out. It's going to be a significant amount of money, and it's going to have to be done a lot of groundwork on before the community is ready for it, for sure. And third is a community center. Uh, we've heard from our human health services staff about the size of the uh, Pleasant Street Center and the fact that it's busting up the seams. Um, and we know demographically that's the largest or the fastest growing segment of our population. So if we want to continue to provide that service, never mind expand it, we just need more space. And what kind of programs do we visualize that? Um, for? Head, head to the uh, Human Elder Services website and just look at what they have now, and I'd say that. Yeah. I don't know that there's anything not being done. Well, I, I guess I don't know that, but they have more space. And then ideally, at least some of us have talked about, you know, Human Elder Services purposes are good, but there's been some discussion that a broader community center would be useful, and that could include a youth center. Um, one of the things that really um, sneaks up and we don't have is some kind of meeting space for the community. So for instance, the athletic banquets that happen every year and every season, they all have to go out of town, almost all, unless they go to a school. But if they actually kind of go to a function hall, it's out of town. Um, so some kind of meeting space with a kitchen you know, would also be really ideal. And if you want to really uh, talk about it, um, you know, you can turn it into a rental opportunity because there's more than just municipal use for it. So I don't know where community center goes. The senior uh, population part is well scoped out. They know how much square feet they want. They know what the activities are. Um, but we don't necessarily know do we want to add something else, including, uh, we've talked very briefly, and I know Barry has, is there any school use that should be added to this? We don't know. Um, we think that's a long shot because we're going to have one building with some school use and some other. There has to be a very definitive wall between the two for security purposes. That's just the law. So you can't just say today it's an elementary school and tomorrow it's a bowling alley for our seniors. You know, it's not going to work. I think there's, I think there's some opportunity for them. You know, I think of our church, and there's lots of churches, yep. there's excess space. There could be some great collaboration. Yep. Of making community space out of buildings that aren't being yeah. used now. And some of our social clubs, you know, different organizations, mm -hmm. you know, Elks or whatever. Right, to um, build more for the sake of building. Right. Oh yeah, this doesn't actually mean build more. Yeah. It just means find. And we've actually talked to one group that is you know, well under the, their, um, their building, their facility is way larger than they need anymore. So, I think we're getting How is, this one progressing, what's the next step? Is it, and who's driving? Um, last night, the select board just divided up these five. I don't remember who got it. It was the John Halsey that got this one. I think, um, so. I think it was. I think so. So, at, at the early stage, beyond knowing what we need for a senior center, it seems fair. And, and as opposed to um, the first item, which is in the capital plan, this is like the second one. There's nothing in the capital plan for this. There's no placeholder. No um, the fourth is somewhat of a catch-all. It's not one thing, it's a bunch of related things. Um, called recreation and athletic uh, repairs. Um, <clears throat> some of this has actually, unfortunately, become urgent. Uh, turf, too, has become urgent. Uh, rain yesterday did even more damage. They had to shut it down again. Um, they have actually got a tarpaulin right now, as far as I know. I don't know if they've undone that. Um, we still hope to get another two years out of it. Not clear. It might have to be closed for safety purposes. So what's it getting closed for now in the rain? Um, the rain is actually getting underneath, ruining the surface underneath, and raising what's left of the turf. I, I had the pleasure of going out on it with um, some of the school folks on a hot day, and we mentioned the surface is 150, I think it was. But wow. it's like this tall, and then the repairs are this tall, so it looks stupid. You go out there and you say, oh yeah, that we had to make a repair, and it's so much taller. Like, you oh, like wow, so the turf is that long when it's really, really short, and then it's, it's really hard, yeah. and it's becoming unsafe. 
So they keep doing repairs, and it's, it's going to start to look even sillier um, as tall and short don't match. So it's only a matter of time. So when it's new, the, the black rubber is super thick. Yeah. And when it was built, whoever um, made the decision, I, I don't think it was well thought out. They should have turfed all the way to the fence. And then the, the current proposal that uh, the schools have looked at is to, if you look at it from the high school and look out at towards Birch Meadow, to expand the left to go another, I don't remember, 10 feet. And then it becomes a regulation football field size so that they can actually practice and have JV games there legally um, and at a relatively minor cost to do that extra field space. Um, <coughs> regulation field. Right. Um, and then it seems like it's a reasonable thing to wrap in the field lighting into this because certainly you would do turf two field lighting as part of this project. And if you'll recall, uh, for some of you have been around, we had authorization to do five fields including turf two, and we didn't have enough money, so we just canceled it. We spent 100000 have it all scoped out, we have it repriced as of two weeks ago. Um, the 900000 remaining authorization is not enough. It needs to be increased. But Turf 2 can be afforded in the budget starting in FY21. So again, it's sort of the override money kicking in for the second year, kind of. Um, and that would consist of all five fields plus Turf 2 totally redone. So if that was the next priority for the schools that is realistically close enough to be in shovel ready. Um, these you know, numbers 2 and 3 just aren't close. This elementary school space of the community center just aren't. Sorry, Bob, I think I'm confused because you were, this is a capital project, but you're talking about override money kicking in. Well, because 5% of the override suddenly fell into the debt capital area as new funding, that's what we available. So okay. there's another couple hundred thousand available each year. Okay. So you've got it slated for 21? Yeah. For but there's some question as to whether it may or may not last that. So, Bob, can you um, lay out, so let's say, pick a number, let's say 200,000. So that's not, and that goes for dead capital. So if it's used for capital, well, that's dollar for dollar, right? So it's 200,000 used for the capital. If it goes for debt, it leverages a higher amount. Is there any way to kind of formula, like say, okay, we have paying $100,000 a year in debt service. What does that leverage in terms of, what does that buy us in terms of um, borrowing? Oh, it's, a, it's a mixed picture. Right. I was great, but yeah, you're right, it leverages you more money right away, but you pay interest in it, right? So it's balancing it. Um, that, that's not really, I don't do that mathematically, there's no magic to it, just figure out this looks reasonable, this looks reasonable. I don't think you want to build up too much debt service because you have to pay that, right? You can't not pay it. But when we have five projects that some will come, yeah, and the timeline will be fluid, it's kind of good to know. What, what what our capacity is yeah. to do this at any given point. Right, right now our capacity is to do um, turf two and the five fields, just as an example, as well as the building security and nothing else on this page inside the levy for the next seven years. So that's just today's today's picture. The high school and the library. Uh, no, that's that, that would be a different debt exclusion. I just mean inside the levy. Oh, okay. There's no room. Um, we can fit in that much. If you want to do anything else today, it would have to be planned outside the level. No. We can grow into some of these smaller things, like a million or two million here and there, but nothing bigger. So are you thinking of a plan B that would address turf two in well, fiscal 20? For now, the plan B would be, I also want to ask, assuming this goes forward the way it is, through November town meeting, I'd want to ask April town meeting for debt authorization also. Even though the funding wouldn't be planned for 21, if then we have any hesitation we want to do or we have grant funding available and we can slide in this in its place, building security, um, that would be great. So again, that's kind of a leap of faith um, with a plan. You know, here's the plan. Either a grant comes in and we have capacity to do this project or a grant doesn't come in and we decide under what parameters we're going to push that out a year and we're going to swap this in a year. And the only reason I didn't swap them around in terms of planning was I don't want to suggest that the recreation stuff is more important because it's not. So in general, but if Turf 2 becomes unusable suddenly, what's the plan? <laughs> I think that's closed. 
But 21. And, and so, but, sorry. And it gets closed. And then what's the plan? Because now you have FY21 yeah. under this scenario. So I wouldn't find that acceptable. I would think that's crazy. Yeah. To basically shut out all those fields, shut out turf two completely You're talking about for a year. Two and, and, and a half million dollars, so we can't spend free cash to do that. So you would have to come up with a different plan fee than I have. Yeah, that's, I guess that's what I'm wondering. I have to say. What's the current, or what teams currently use it? Oh, I, I don't really want to say. I have to say, you remember, you remember last week we had a torrential downpour and my house wasn't ready for it. I don't know which day it was, but um, Tuesday. until then, this all made perfect sense. Right. Starting then and then yesterday, the rain did way more damage than anyone expected. Yeah. And it looks like rain is going to continue to do damage. That's not something any of us had thought of or planned on. Right. So, so as of right now, it looks like probably it would have to be closed. Uh, well, when it's, when it's going to rain hard, it has to be closed. You know, it's a question of how much maintenance can you do to keep using it, and I can't answer that question. I could have answered it 10 days ago, but I can't answer it now. Yeah. But, pardon the pun, but this one's been footballed around a lot. Yeah. Right? So it was, first we needed it desperately, then we decided we could wait, we could then we do it. repairs, then it rains hard. Yeah. It's like our roof that's leaking. It's only so long you can patch. patch. Yeah. Yeah, I, just, I think we, we may want to have a, even a plan C that just says, all right, the plan B is, is a broader plan that creates funding and opens things up inside the levy. But if we have an emergency, you know, what is the priority of turf two? You know, maybe we say it isn't priority, so don't worry about it. Or maybe we say, yikes, it's going to displace so much stuff, it has to get done. Yeah, and if um, I was asking the athletic director, I guess it was last Friday, the amount of lead time you need, the, the ideal the time to do work is in the summer. So if it was approved this November, we could probably do work next summer. If it's approved this April, we probably cannot do work next summer. Unless we went out to bid this winter and assumed the town meeting would approve it, it was ready, not, not assumed, but it was prepared. Yeah. And usually we don't do that because it doesn't seem right. We could, and we could explain that to November town meeting. Look, you'll see us going out for bid. You know, we haven't asked you. This is just a be prepared. They really have to go to bid in the winter in order to do summer work, and that's the only time they can really do it. And that'd be FY20 money next summer, that right. one, right? Yep. Just like 21 sounds so far away, but that's right. less than two years. Yep. So it would so be a summer project. Again, no problem with swapping those two things I've told you about if it has to be. Right. Um, there's no physical way to do it sooner. You know, if they started doing the work next May or June, it's still FY20 money. So why, that's why you're thinking because getting authorization. When we get that authorization in April, we can borrow one or two weeks after the town meeting. We just have to schedule a repayment in the year we said. We don't have to wait till July 1st. You can actually borrow in May. And we usually do in May or June. So yeah, this one's become a little, a little bit more urgent. And then just to round it out, um, the stadium turf and track still need to be replaced. Yes, and uh, well, he said three years, so I said five years, and it's close enough. Um, so it's not nearly as urgent, but at the once upon a time, they were pretty close together in need, maybe within a year. This was always acknowledged to be a little less important. And, you know, again, maintenance has really helped, but this one more than the other. So it's spread out the difference to, to the time. So they'd have to replace the track? Yep. Oh. Is that a spread? In 10 years. How old is the previous one? Turf was bought as 20-year turf, and then a couple years in, it was acknowledged to be 10-year turf. So the turf is 10 years old, too? Yeah. Hmm. Well, yeah, turf is not cheap. I mean, it's maintenance is it's cheaper than grass in some ways. Just let the grass well, I said to John this morning, John Dory, I said, let's just put some uh, saw over the turf. You <laughs> <laughs> fix the hype problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, and then, you know, not far behind the stadium is the field house. Um, you know, we've talked about this in the past. The bleachers were kind of an optional item, but if you're going to redo the floors, they never did the bleachers when they renovated the high school. They're really old. They're kind of dangerous. Um, they really need to be fixed. And then the last and lowest priority, because I don't even know what it is, is this is a subcommittee on recreation talking about birch metal improvements. And I have nothing to do with the field. Always just kind of carried a million dollar placeholder. The only thing I've 
conversion rates is likely to be less than that. So that's not a conversion to the least. So those kind of conveniently get grouped together, even though there's lots of divisibility. And no funding source for any other term. Only the first one. And then the last one's the DPW garage. I don't think you spend a lot of time on that. That's going to be complicated finances, assuming there's more than one town involved. And um, you know, it's, it's a thing all by itself. Any new interesting work there? Uh, Winfield's interested in it used to be, so that kind of made us go out. They have a new town uh, town administrator and, and a board that's now supportive. And they want they want to find out if they can join. So that's another thing for our legislators. Uh, that's just going to take an enormous amount of work and focus that honestly we don't have today. Um, we need to develop, I guess. So that, I thought an overview like that. So, you know, you can see that, you know, we've made some progress in terms of some things on this list are now planned out and able to be financed. There's a lot of stuff that isn't. Uh, and do the math, but if you assume you know, elementary school, DPW garage, um, some kind of a community center, and all this turf stuff, it's a big number. I don't even want to say. It's just a big number. Yeah. And these are the things we know about. Reasonably comfortable. There's nothing else we didn't think of, but one never knows. No, oh, yeah, it doesn't have three comments. She could. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Just two. You might have a lot of dozen digits. Yeah. And then again, what follows is, you know, what's proposed to be a capital plan. You can sort of see on page seven. There's an $88,000 ask in town meeting for, I think it's three relatively small counties. One of them actually was a wrecked police cruiser that had insurance back, but the insurance will have to go to the general fund and they'll have to buy another cruiser. And the insurance doesn't quite cover the whole cost. It's so the delta is 88? No, the total ask is 88 for the cruiser and two other smaller. Two other smaller. Okay, thank you. So what page do you want? Page 7. Under FY19, you can see it at 88,000 for the November town meeting, just kind of sticking out there. Oh, gotcha. And, um, you know, the, the big departments, uh, DPW facilities especially, have really worked the capital. I think mean, it's a pretty good list. So it's, you know, you can start seeing out in the seventh or eighth year, there's a lot of surplus now. Partly that's because debt falls off, partly that's because facilities doesn't usually know what's going to break. 10 years in advance, they might go five years in advance. You can see some of the facilities planning is not as long. But we're, we're, you know, the capital plan's in good shape, albeit there's these other needs that aren't there yet. TLTs, you don't see it in these pages, but it's in the debt schedule. And it's crowded out, you know, some of the capital that might have always had. It's saying that. How much did we open up I think it was. Yeah, so two million of free cash. The SBA paid a chunk, and then we borrowed the rest. And um, we came to the late at November town meeting. We had to repay some one hundred seventy thousand of the short term, you know, just out of free cash or something. So you know, one of the topics at the financial forum and in general should be all these projects. Make sure people know about them. We all, all want to undergo, get to a place that we're comfortable with. What's the priorities? That's really hard. Um, how, how do you even figure the priority? That's difficult. So really, the first thing that that would be outside the left that would need to go to the voters would be the uh, security. No, that's inside. That's. Inside. that's um, the, the things that aren't inside are the rest of the recreational and athletic stuff. Not a, not a big ticket number. Um, elementary school space, community center, and DPW garage. But the elementary school, I mean, we're just voting to spend money now to study it. Right. So you're looking at two years, maybe? By the time it 
Yeah. Figure five. out what is needed, gets vetted, gets priced. Go, yeah. It's a, that's two years. Yeah, I don't, I don't think any of the things, you can do the athletic stuff tomorrow uh, as a debt exclusion or a capital exclusion. You know, we're ready. We know the cost. We know what's needed. Uh, yeah, whether or not it's a priority is a different question. But the others can't be that close to being ready within the next two years. They need more work. Different amounts, different ways. You know, if we're just going to rebuild or move a senior center, we can figure that out actually fairly quickly. But if we're going to do other things, that's different. Like now have a liaison for that, so they'll work on that. And I assume, and I know that I think three of these um, are heavily school related, so I know they have an interest in participating. So the good news is that there's breathing room. Override kicks in, I mean, kicks in, people stop getting their bills. Um, and by the time that we have to ask them for something new, right, we've got better handle on growth, right, in terms of. Yeah, that, that's the other thing is we don't know how much growth will happen that we might be able to grow into a little more room here. Mm -hmm. uh, but it takes an awful lot of growth at 5% of it to go to capital for $2 million. Okay, well, we knew we'd never grow away at it, but yeah. I mean, the relief for me, I was thinking when I knew, I mean, thinking about all these capital projects, and I knew that they're all important and you know, we'll all have different times. But it's like, there is a little bit of breathing room between the time we had went to the voters last time and the time we're going to have to go again. And by that time, things sink in, more work's done, things can be explained. It's not like one, it's not like a, you know, like a wave, one thing after another. Yeah. So, that's good. Yes. Um, you have the high school fallout and the library. Yeah, the library. High school fallout 24 and library 25 in terms of payments. That's finished. You can see light at the end of the tunnel by the time. What we want to try to avoid, or what John and I have talked about, is we don't want to start pitting interests against each other. I want mine first. I want mine first. Um, that's not going to really happen. But it's really going to be what's ready. Well, I don't know. You tell me. Is that the way it's going to be, or is it, this is more important? Make it ready. Everything else can wait. I don't know. There's no easy answer. And they all have their paths, right. right? And their due diligence about that. Yeah. If you were to put community center, let's pretend we knew what we wanted, a DPW garage same, and elementary schools, I guarantee you at least one of those won't pass. If you put them on the same route, and maybe two, and maybe three. <laughs> so you want to really carefully think this out as a strategy. Put them together, you know, who knows what you do. But the point is, that kind of thinking is not possible because an override passed, and to, you know, if it hadn't passed, these would all be on a wish list somewhere. Yeah. You couldn't plan for that's important to communicate. Yeah. yeah. And to have a good open process for the discussion yes. of each of them, with the goal of not pitting interests against one another, but having a great process. And, and the, I mean, the way I think about how the operating override passed, right? The operating override passed because the select board, the school committee, you know, uh, worked together with a single mission, right? And, and it was sort of, okay, yes. X percent of this money is going to go to the operating side, X percent is going to go to the schools. Each group did their own work, right? But collectively came together. There's no reason that that process can't be duplicated on a capital. Yeah. You know, and I think we learned a lot from the operating. Yeah, yeah and there's, um, I don't know how much creativity will solve the elementary school space, but there's definitely creativity in both the community center and the public. Well, that's one of the thoughts we had was you know, the, what we would have 
done would have alleviated some of the other costs. Um, specifically, we talked about moving the superintendent and central office there, and then maybe rearranging between our building and their building so it wasn't just you know, one. And then that would allow uh, Rise and the high school to have much more space to use and lower the need for elementary school space in a way because that's part, Rise is part of that. Oh, yeah. And they use other space at Killam. So it was, you know, it was thought about, and we kicked it around, and that was one of the important things: was do we really want to be a landlord to a bank? Sorry. It might be smarter than well, you do. You don't pay you back. That's true. Yeah, and we had really good discussions with them. But just, just again, before an override, it just didn't make sense. After an override, it might have been a whole different discussion, but it was kind of distracting. You know, we looked at that, and we've looked at other space uh, downtown for different purposes, or, or not even knowing what we do with it, because there are some, yeah, there are some landlords or tenants that have more space than we And then again, we have land at Oakland Road, so that's another thing that the slide board is looking at. Is, do we sell it for cash, and do we get an asset, or do we use it for something on the bodies list? Firefighters for some period of time, 
So I could never promise before the override passed that we could do that because we, you know, we were just as eligible a year or two years ago as we were now. Uh, we had to apply before we knew what the override results were. And I finally felt, I won't say confident, but comfortable that if the override passed, we're in the position we are now. And if it failed and we got the grant, we'd just turn it down and we'd feel really bad about that. Well, we have a discussion. Look, here's the opportunity. Someone's given us 600 grand. But somehow, with a failed override, we still have to then pay for four firefighters yeah. down the road. I don't think that would have worked, but it could have been a discussion. And it is all or not. So it's 604 total. So that's the total over three years. Um, the first two years are some amount, and then the third year is much lower. But I don't know. Um, I know what the numbers are. I know what the years are. But I think it's a federal fiscal year, not ours. So I don't, I don't know yet what the fiscal year impact is. And that's, for some reason, that seems to be a difficult question for them to answer. I don't know. Reason that's important, you know, if you're just going to accept the grant and it's going to go to free cash, that's easy. Who cares when the money comes in? Off it goes. Um, and that that was kind of my assumption. But Dan uh, Ensminger raised the point that, hey, you know, if you got free money, that's really the taxpayers are paying for the firefighters now. Someone else is. Maybe we should give it back. And, you know, that's a philosophical. Wait, argument. say that again. If if the override paid for the firefighters yeah. and now someone else is paying for those four firefighters. For some period of time, maybe we give tax relief to the voters. But the grant's paying for it for yeah. three years. And so we, we give back, back 600000 or whatever to the tax. But how does that voters. position is three years from now when right. we have to pay right. for it? Um, that's a question that we have to be careful with. That's yeah. all. You know, we do um, when the we have four firefighters. No, no, you can't do that. Oh, yeah. Raise taxes again. Well, <laughs> no, we can't do that either. <laughs> well, what we can do is so we, do? we don't tax to the full levy, that's all. Right. Then right. we automatically can. They can do it whatever they want every year in tax classification. Right. Um, so they you know, leave 200000 on the table, just to be simple, the next three years, and then don't do that in the fourth year. And that is, again, it's, it's not the way I'd rather see one time spending now. Well, the advantage of not doing that, with all due respects to the taxpayers, which I want, is you can uh, take the 600000 and repurpose it for some other one-time thing. Right. right. This is definitely a philosophical discussion. There isn't a right or a wrong answer. Or you could do some of each. Yep. yep. So we just happen to know that so our CASA is unfunded. Correct. Right, starting three quarters of next year? Yeah, exactly. So to the tune of about 150 grand a year. Kind of roughly what this is. Yeah. Yeah, so you could argue in FY20, let's take some of this and direct it there. And you get there's lots of But then it puts us go. still in an awkward position three years from yeah. now. We need to pay the very to it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Or, or finding but additional funding for our casting. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. And which we will have to. Yeah. So, Bob, how is that? I mean, obviously, we have to have that philosophical discussion at the board level because we set tax for the right. Okay, but I would think that that discussion happens here too. That's why I thought they should at least hear about what you are going to discuss. Because right? I'd like to get—I mean, I'd like to get some guidance, right? I'd like to kind of—I'd want to know what all the options are, yeah. every single option that, that's out there. And then before going into setting a tax rate, which we're going to do in four weeks, five weeks, four weeks, uh, three weeks, uh, three weeks, yeah, three and a half weeks. So, so just one opinion. I, I generally would probably err on the side of uh, covering one-time expenses or short-term expenses with something like this. In this particular case when it's something that people will point to and say you used firefighters as the reason why we need this override right. was keeping you up at night and that sort of thing right um, you know and the grant was in process I know we had zero visibility into our likelihood of getting in that sort of thing but the grant was in process at the time of the override I, I think this is from an optics perspective from a trust of the voter perspective from thinking about the next time we need an override and however many years that is hopefully not too few um, it, this is one where I, I think I come down on the other side of it and say we, we have to be really thoughtful about whether the right thing to do is to, is to give it back to the taxpayer. Yeah, and the tricky part, I mean, we can figure this out, but if you think of the way the budget process works, we collect 200000 less in revenue. We 
cut to the fire budget of 200,000, I mean, we still have that expense. It's, it's a little tricky. It's not as easy as it first seems. Right, because I, I just don't get how then three years now, whatever the time period is, you're now constrained by two and a half. Well, we, we have 600,000 of revenue we didn't budget for. Right. So we give, give back some you know, amount, that amount to the taxpayers, and we hope what we gave back matches the extra revenue, in which case the budget has passed, it's fine, everything works. And forgetting the fact we don't know timing and all that. We just have to be really careful that we don't actually cut the fire department budget, because obviously at some point you need it back. And that's, that was one of the risks. That's what one of the, I'm not a select was telling me, I just cut the budget, because the grant's going to pay for it. That's an accounting question. I think the answer is the grants go into the general fund as a revenue. You still need to have town meeting vote the full amount of what it costs to have firefighters. But what really, rudimentary, if, if you're given this money and it covers you for three years, but then you need it in your base three years from now, but you can't go up by more than 2.5%. No, I, I think the so, way you need to look at it is you have extra revenue. Forget how it's being spent. You have 600000 of extra revenue. Okay. And you just say, no, I'm going to take away 600000 of revenue for those three years. Everything else doesn't change. And then in the fourth year, you say, OK, I don't have that extra revenue. I'm going to go back and grab it all myself from the local taxpayers. And the budget itself has never changed. It goes up 2.5%. You have a fire department budget. It moves along. That's one way to look at it. It's a, it's a little I tricky because I feel like I'm not some, I the overall levy is two hundred thousand less just to keep it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. two hundred thousand less than right. it would have been for three years. We we, we can only go up two and a half percent on that reduced. So you can always go back up to two hundred thousand. You can. Right. Yeah. You and can. Then go two and a half. You have what's called a levy limit, and if you go below it, you can always go back to the levy limit plus two and a half percent. Oh, year. that's what I. Can. <laughs> just gonna redo it in year one, and then say, you know what? For the cost of things that we're just going to go to the full levy this year. Yeah, you do it. It's not like a one time. No, it's an annual decision. And honestly, you know, this board can say something, and next year's board can do something else. It's does it matter that there's no firefighters? It's like the average right? taxpayer. I feel like it's going to be no, more it confused. Does. No, obviously, though. Actually, obviously it does. It does. Surplus. Actually, the fact that there aren't firefighters does make a big difference, right? Because this can't, of it can't rent. <laughs> but it also, you can't, you can't take money to pay people you don't have. Yes, we have a deadline when we have to hire them, and we know that, and we're on track to do that. So, yeah, I think it's like <coughs> But if you said that, so me, taxpayer, isn't going to have as big an increase this year for the next three years as I was expecting, but all of a sudden, three years from now, it goes, whoop, and I go, whoa, what happened? Oh, yeah. Right? It, it, that's exactly what would happen. I would be a little concerned about that because the average taxpayer is not going to understand the Against the scale of the budget and the scale of the total tax mm -hmm. levy, I mean, it's it might not a, be a, a twentieth. Yeah. I mean, it's five basis points about? or something. It's yeah, not order of magnitude. It's twenty bucks per exactly. per family per year. Yeah. No. Two hundred. Two hundred. Two hundred times tax ten thousand sixty-five million. And yeah. Talking about two hundred thousand. So whatever that is. I was just thinking for, for the average tax bill, if you got ten thousand homes. Yeah, 20 bucks, 20 it's, bucks at home. That's right. Yeah, it's like 20 bucks at home per year. I think it's that little. Maybe you're right. 10,000 sure. houses 10, times, and that's times 20 bucks is 200,000 bucks a year. Of the figure it's 1% of the budget, right? 600,000. Yeah, 1% of the budget is uh, 75 bucks. Yeah, but it's 600,000 over three years. Right, it's right, divided by three. A little like 200,000 per year. And it would actually phase in because it would be, so it wouldn't be all yeah. at once in year four. Increases. Year three, we'd have to go a little bit closer to the levy limit. Because it drops from 75 right. to 35, so and then, and then you're fine. Yeah. Right. It just, but it, however you put it together, it's not like I'm saying 20 bucks. It's like 20 bucks or 30 yeah, bucks. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, 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 the impact on the downside, if you want to think about it that way, for the tax bill is minimal the first couple of years. The slight bump up in year three is is even half of that, and then the, the last bump in year four is the other half. It's, uh, where, yeah. does the, where does the, the override show up in the tax bill? Has it already done that? Has already done that. Well, an estimate has already done that. Um, the first two tax bills were done on an estimated basis, like they are right. here. And, and Victor estimated the 4.15 million in prorated over four quarters. So people have um, seen the that. The third and fourth quarter will be the 
real ones, and I don't know if this year there's going to be a little bit more of a bump. I don't. I just don't. Yeah, they've they've already seen more of a bump because of the fact that assessments have gone higher. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever the impact of what you do with the board is on the tax rate. You know, we're getting into the weeds that you don't want to ever have to explain. I, I know, but except yeah, in a summary. The, but, yeah, but the question is, is like, you know, you, you took the money, you didn't need it. Mm -hmm. then, yep. But, but then we're going to we're going to we're going to we're going to spend money on something else that's needed. Um, and yes, we're not going to tax you for it because that's going to be money. But now we're going to do without something else right? because if we, if we decide to fund that, that's process, why you know it's not my decision. That's why I kind of think you just do something each. Yeah. You know, let's, uh, let's recognize that this happened and, you know, here's, here's some money. I mean, some money. I, mean I, I, get the, I get Dan's point, right? I mean, it's sort of totally. like, it's, it's raw, right? It's new. You know, yeah, just totally. you know, trust us, trust us, trust us, and now this thing comes up. On the other hand, you'd have no incentive to apply for a grant anymore. Right. Because, you'd have to get, because if we get it and we do this other thing, we have to get it back. You know, what was the incentive to actually go out and do this? And I have to well, say, I, I mean, I the, the incentive is we're all, the entire town is telling the town, the taxpayer, that they're doing everything they can to be good stewards of your money, right? And that's why you should trust us and give us this money when we tell you we need an override. And this is, this is an indication of that. It's not just that we're cautious about our expenses. It's not just that we, uh, you know, don't overstaff and we don't need to. It's that when we have opportunities to get grants that offset the, the impact of the taxpayer, we do that as well. I and mean, that, that's the incentive, right? I mean, you know, I, I, like to me, the actual, the actual monetary impact of this is, is relatively nominal. It's about as small as you can get. But the, the optics of the optics of saying we're doing the right thing on this one are, I think, are important. Yeah. yeah. I think it's worth this. Guy. Just an opinion note too. Our casa was known as an unfunded issue going into the override. It was clearly laid out to everybody. And we actually we don't have money. For we this. actually could have put it in the override, but we chose not to because we weren't going to need the money for five quarters. Right. Exactly. Right. And then maybe that puts it in a different class. Yeah. Maybe not. But well, my plan for next year, John agrees. Uh, to ask for 150,000 in you know, FY20. That's, you know, assuming we want to do the same thing, maybe right. we can figure that out. Yeah, right. Um, and just have cost yeah, kind of have that come off the top. Right. And then whatever's left, we split the unit away. Yeah, we'll which isn't so unusual. Uh, how yeah, that's how we added an SRO and other things along the way. Right. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice problem to have. Absolutely. Yeah. Prefer this yeah. to the other one. <laughs> yeah. 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 But. yeah, I wish we had more financial precision. And I'm not sure we're going to have it when they set the tax rate. I don't know what they ask. It's federal money, so good luck. That's why, again, just do some of that and then see how it works. 100,000, 150,000 is fine. Some thousand gets a little tricky. You know, you've, you've seen our mm -hmm. revenue in excess, so it's probably fine. You know, what's the difference? 100, 200,000 is fine. We're going to have more revenue than we think. We're going to spend less than we think. What's the big deal? Um, but, you know, you you may be comfortable using a million of free cash, but not a million, too. So sometimes 200,000 does kind of matter at the beginning of the budget process. So there's no obvious answer. I, I sort of take Sean's point, and I think that's what Dan was saying. Right, and in the scale, it's not. I was visualizing right. being more money. But I think trust also is making, keeping clear what's going on and why, and letting people participate in the decisions. Right. So, the sharing of all the projects that um, the town needs to consider or should consider, but there's no funding for them. Right. So there's a process to think about them. There's a process to discuss the priorities. There's a process to make the decision. You know, zero, so one, two, or three. When we did the when we did the budget process, I think the schools did this. Um, I think we kind of did it too, or, or we talked about it. Well, I, I think you might have even brought it up. I don't remember. I know Elaine talked about it too. It was kind of okay. Here's what we can do, but here's sort of you know a community priority. Right? We don't have the money for it yet. But it's something we all agree that 
next dollar one that we get next should go to this thing. And you know, you know Ricasa is the first thing that comes to mind. There may be other things that people have are, are, are noodling around that haven't spoken about. But you know, having those community priorities when you have a windfall, right? You know, a godsend. Right? The federal government actually giving us something bad. You know, having that already been discussed and on the table and sort of like. Yep, we all agree to have this. Then it's easy to kind of have that trade-off discussion about, okay, would you rather have the 20 bucks in your pocket or would you rather fund this thing when we're in the middle of an opioid crisis? And, and, and let people debate and talk about it and chew it around. And, you know, um, and I think that's healthy. But I don't know if that can happen through because we can say that. It can't possibly happen until this year. Except for right now. Well, I mean, it could be a topic at the financial forum, right? I mean, you're going to have, why not? We won't have the detail, but the, the philosophical discussion is out. That's right. That's what he said the night before. Oh, it's night before. Oh, literally? Mm -hmm. uh, I thought it was the week after. Is there any, um, is there any, uh, oh, room? Uh, hang on, you might be right. Might be the week after. Yeah, no, we're doing it this 20, but no, it's the 7th. No, it's the 30th. No, it's two weeks before, the 16th. It is the week after, but we might have an assessor resign if you're not going to tell them what to do next week, as opposed to that week on Tuesday. When, um, when you see Victor next week, our, our assessor, you know, he's easing kind of what you want to do two weeks from then. Just remember, he's got to hear it on Tuesday night and have it ready for you in eight days for your next packet. Do so we have to set the tax rate in October? Can we do it in November? Um, I think that's a question. Better. Yeah. In terms of what the DOR is. It's it's always better to do it sooner. Thank you. I just don't know how fast the DOR is going to do things. We've been years where we're setting setting up tax bills. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. In December, because the DOR was so backed up. So, you know, by law, at least now, you have to get them off by December. Yeah, we, we usually build some emergency to throw into your process. Except the other night we had to close the warrant that night. Yeah, well, that's, night. Right. we're going to do it the week before, so that's, we yeah. already used the right. emergency time. So, yes, you don't have to set the tax rate on October 16th, but it's better that next week you already plan that and say, we're going to do it on October 30th, and then we just that way. Because I think. Just sitting here in the last 45 minutes and getting, you know, understanding kind of the magnitude of what we have to do. I mean, we have to make a decision in a really short period of time about, you know, without really having any public discussion other than what happens at that meeting, right? And, you know, I've agreed with all the points everybody said here, but I, I, I think, I think the select board should have the benefit of. You can have that discussion next next Tuesday too. That's you know they're doing a preview of tax classification next Tuesday. And obviously this is one of the topics. Because I mean, it's I, I can see us doing one of three things. Right. Just you know reducing all the levy, keeping it all, or doing part of it, part part. So yeah, don't overthink. Respectfully, <laughs> <laughs> dark point. <laughs> It would be great PR, to your point. Yeah. Yeah. You could achieve that because, two of those three. Right, because in reality, it's not that much right. money, but it could look and people so refreshing that we did something no one would ever expect. Yeah. No, I know. The question. I'm just thinking of the form of the question. Like, that's no. very much on people's minds. Yeah. Yeah. So, with respect to the financial form in this topic, I, I will ask CEO. I'll ask our assessor tomorrow, and I might even ask him tonight, um, on October 30th, tax classification, see what he says. I mean, you know, in emergencies, you have to. It's really an emergency. Um, and I'll trust him, whatever he says. The way he feels either already gone or to go sooner. He does both. The business is gone right this year. The senior tax relief thing, I do even sooner is better, but you'll hear more about that. Well, maybe I'm oversimplifying here, but 
I'm, not, I'm, I'm sure I'm oversimplifying, but you can correct me. Um, is all we're really asking Victor to figure out is whether the tax levy should be or could be thirteen dollars or twelve dollars and ninety eight cents, right? And that's essentially you know we're trying to figure out what that delta is if you you know say rebate for lack of a better term the to whatever this works out to be versus putting it somewhere else. If that's all it was, that would be simple and it's easy to layer too. It depends on next week how the board comes down, all the options and all the tools they have. If they set a really clear course and that's the only remaining question, okay. So okay. that's okay. easy. Okay. But if you're if you're gonna give a wide range of factors, one point oh 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 two to one point no, whatever. I think uh, I, I, I think it's gonna be a really narrow band. Okay, that would be helpful. So, yeah. but, you know, he can he can do whatever would work we need him to do. He's for me to say. Uh, the question is, is he anxious by submitting two weeks later to the state in terms of the whole process? And I, I just don't know. I don't know an answer for him. I think it's okay, but I don't know. Well, one middle ground option for his sanity, if he's a little bit anxious but not fully anxious, <laughs> is going with a hypothesis, right? Have an opportunity for public discussion if that changes the board's opinion, um, you know, or, or makes the board reach an opinion that's different from that hypothesis. Then we serve 10:30 as the date for setting the levy. Well, he knows about this discussion. Right. I actually, he had prepared something showing 200,000 less. And I said, you know, for simplicity, next week it's only a preview. Show them no break and then talk to how you would figure out what a break is, rather than throwing so many numbers out there that people's head starts to sure. mm -hmm. right. Then we have to then, each one of those has a, well, it's a 1.1 1 .1 factor. Exactly. Right? Just, exactly. Change, it, it, there's too many matrices. Exactly. That's, that's a challenge. None of this is complex. It's just, as you build on more possibilities, yeah, it's right. harder. Right, trying to just be clean about this.
uh, numbers from Sharon yet, so it's kind of hard tonight. We're only meeting in another two or three weeks, but hopefully I'll have better information by then. If not, we'll just have to take some guesses. We do have new growth that is uh, 800 and something thousand. We had assumed 550, so that's good. Uh, and that's, again, I think I said very little impact on projects you know about. Uh, we have health insurance savings. And those two are 400,000. We need about 400,000 for other purposes. And I remember the TLT was 170. Capital was 80. Must be other little pieces. I just don't remember. Must be a bigger piece. Anymore. Just say that's one of the discussion items. Seriously, that, right, with that one, what's one of the discussion items? Whether or not to give them to kid to, to provide six hundred thousand dollars in tax relief. Oh, really. I still won't get there. Yeah. <laughs> some people there. Yeah. How much is that for me? Oh, twenty-five bucks. Well, maybe you get this quoted yeah. as six hundred thousand per household. Yeah. <laughs> for the folks on fixing.